Thank you very much. Sita mina expert ni hewan ang sisi. Ano ako magantik na nasko mo nun. Tina nasko mo nun ako ng kiyaw. Tumawag. Ito yun. Esquare of Napoleon. Uskayo. Sita Perry Belgard sa ega. Sa yun. Kasi kateo masak sa isko nun ganyan. Treaty 4 territory. I am very happy to be here, friends and relatives. I know it's been a piece of color, and I've been working on this month to get in our school to acknowledge the Creator for this beautiful day, the chiefs, the leaders, the youth, the men, the women. I thank you all for what you've done on this walk, on this journey. I want to, as well, acknowledge all the leadership here, and Chief Peter Collins spoke earlier on, welcomed us to his territory, Fort William. Uh, but as well as my colleague, Regional Chief Stan Beardy, Regional Chief, Grand Chief Harvey Yesno, Deputy Chief Alan Fidler, and of course, Chief Connie Green, and as well, Chief Arnold Gardner, and as well, my colleague and friend, Grand Chief Derek Ipanan, who's here as well. My apologies to the other chiefs if I miss someone. I'm not supposed to do that. First Nations politics, but I, I lift you all up. I lift you all up, and thank you, counselors as well. This, this issue, and to all the walkers, you know, for the suffering, for what you've done, last two weeks, walking over 650 kilometers in the wind, the cold, the rain, the snow, to raise awareness to a very important issue. Of course, the missing murder of Indigenous women and girls. And from the community, we've heard the names, Viola Panachis and Sarah Skunk, and there are others. But we always say to the families, the families that need healing, the families that need answers, families that need justice and families that need hope. It's so important to keep doing what we're all doing across the line. Because it's not only our issue. It's not only a region's issue. It's, it's not only Canada's issue, it's an international issue. In terms of the violence in our communities and how it's directed at our women as well. And when I think about the history of this nation state they call Canada, I always say there's two things that really affected us as indigenous peoples. And we still feel the effects in our communities no matter what reserve or territory we're from. The biggest thing was the imposition of the residential schools that hurt our people, that killed our people, that killed the identity and pride in ourselves as individuals. They took our young ones away from their homes, from their families, and everything good about being an Indian is no good. Your long hair is no good. Your language is no good. Your ceremonies are no good. Your family is no good. Your communities are no good. You've got to become like Muniawa, like white people. And then when you combine in that residential school system, all the abuses, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, the sexual abuse, what's cultural genocide, that the people coming out of that system don't know how to care. They don't know how to love. They don't know, don't know how to have a healthy relationship. They don't know how to raise a healthy family because of what they suffered in there. And so it's this thing called intergenerational effects of residential schools we still see in our people. We still see in our communities. And that's something we need to heal from. We, need to, we learn from that, but how do we get well? How do our men become healthy fathers? How do our men become healthy uncles? So that they know how to care and love and have a healthy relationship. That's an issue we gotta work on. It's wellness centers, but for everybody, not just for the women's safe shelters, the men's safe shelters, the men's wellness centers, healing as a community. We have to look at that. So that residential schools is a big thing. And we see the impact right across Canada. All 634 First Nations feel the impact of intergenerational effects of residential schools. And the other one is the Indian Act. The Indian Act that's still there since 1876. And so our parents and grandparents went through that permit system. You couldn't leave the reserve without a permit. You couldn't kill your own cattle without a permit. You couldn't sell your own wood without a permit. You couldn't sell your own grain without a permit. You weren't even allowed to have access to a lawyer until 1951. 
You couldn't even vote in white man politics if you wanted to until 1961. So this Indian Act. So between those two things, it broke down our governance system. Our hereditary chiefs were no good. And they imposed a two-year elective system in our reserves. That still has big impacts for our people. So because of that cultural genocide via those two things, we see the state of things or the state of community wellness or lack of wellness in our, in our peoples and our communities. And we know in Canada, we say, I say it this way, there's a huge gap that exists. And the gap that I'm talking about is Canada's rated sixth in terms of the United Nations Human Development Index, high up. But when you apply those same indices to our people, we're 63rd, south here. Sixth versus 63rd. And that gap represents the lack of housing in our communities. That gap represents the cap on education. That gap represents the high youth suicides. That gap represents the violence. That gap represents the disproportionate number of First Nations people in jails. That gap represents high diabetes, high tuberculosis, all these things amongst our people. And so we need to close that gap. We need to push governments to close that gap. To really look at new ideas like revenue sharing, like treaty implementation, and dealing with the 2% cap that's been there. And this issue we're trying to raise now is missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. We have to make this not only an election issue for October 19, but raise it to a national, international level. And we know that the NDP said if they get elected, there will be an inquiry. The Liberals, if they get elected, there will be an inquiry. But on the Conservatives, they say it's not high on our radar. And I'm thinking, gee, it's good politics to push for this inquiry because three quarters of Canadian men and women want an inquiry. So it's good politics for the governments here to push for this inquiry, to deal with the root causes. It makes sense. So we have to keep doing what we're doing make this a big issue on everybody's mind. To look at investments now in the daycares, the safe shelters, the wellness centers, and the homes we need, all those things have to happen now. We had a round table in February, and there was four things that come out of that round table. The premiers were there. We're gonna be seeing them again here in another month and a half. And when we get the premiers together, they did commit to one thing. They said in Manitoba, Premier Salinger committed to a national forum on justice and policing. Because that's an issue. That's an issue. To make sure that there's adequate resources. When the women and our girls go missing, that they make it a priority. That they're just as important as everybody else. That their lives matter. They're not just put to the side. And, oh, it's, they were living unhealthy lifestyles, they're just on a party, or they were, they were out on the streets anyway, so don't worry. They minimize it. And we know there are loved ones, there are people, there are relatives. There are mothers, or godmothers, or aunties, or little nieces, and their lives are important. So the justice and the policing system has to be dealt with. That was committed from Manitoba. Ontario committed to a national awareness education piece on this issue. So we have to hold them to that. Then they all committed again to another national round table. So that there'd be something else here in a year's time. And that's the word, important word is action. Implementation of recommendations. And so we've got to keep pushing on all those fronts. So that there is a change. And then we as well, in our own territories, in our own communities, in our own way, have to get on a wellness strategy as well. Even when the RCMP and they came out with this 70%, you know, on the violence is done by Aboriginal men. So we know there's work we need to do. But even when you break that down, how many were Indian men? How many were Métis men? How many were Inuit men? How many were on reserve? How many were off reserve? You can break it down further and further. The issue that I go back to is again this intergenerational effects. 
that we have lost that warrior spirit. We have lost that way because of this cultural genocide. And so we need all of our young men as well to wake up and come back to that. I'll call it the Indian way, the red road, sweet crap, whatever you want to call it, but it's a wellness road. So that we have healthy individuals. So that we can have healthy families, healthy communities, healthy nations. So rather than go out like this and point, it's your fault. Point it like this. What am I doing? How am I inside? How am I showing the way? Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, being a healthy role model. Then you start there. And if you're healthy inside, hopefully we pray you'll have healthy families, healthy communities, healthy nations. So it begins here. So everybody here, take that to heart. My last message to our little ones, the young men and women in here, and I hold that little girl up. That's why. Leader here already. You don't have to be elected to be a leader. She's leading the way. She's leading the way in a good way. <laughs> to the young ones, to the little ones, because we know there's so much discrimination and racism, and that our people go through these things, civilize the Indians, assimilate the Indians, terminate the Indians, and now it's integration now. And the message to our young one is we need to walk in both worlds. Walk in both worlds. We need kindergarten and grade 12. We need university. We need technical skills on this one hand. But equally as important, on the other hand, is to know who you are and where you come from. Your languages, your home communities, your ceremonies, your people. Be proud of who you are. And then when we integrate into society now as indigenous peoples, we're not going to be ashamed of who we are, dragging our heads shy to speak, you know, because society made us feel bad about being Indians. That's not how we're going to integrate. We're going to integrate part of who we are as Nehewak peoples, Chenishnabad peoples, Nakota peoples, Dene peoples, part of our language, who we are. That we are living a healthy lifestyle now, free from alcohol and drugs. And that when our people get jobs, it's not because they have beautiful brown skin, it's because they've got the education, the skills, and the training to get those jobs. And we're going to be proud of our people, proud of who we are and where we come from. So to the young ones, always raise your head high. Be proud of who you are. You're very special. The Creator doesn't make junk. He doesn't make junk. You're very special. Be proud of who you are. We're going to take our rightful place as indigenous peoples. This issue we're working on here, this one, it's bigger, not just this missing word, it is, there's a bigger piece we're all part of. We're gonna need everybody in this room to keep doing what you're doing, to raise this issue so we can close that gap and bring about how a change, how we're viewed upon in this country. No more are we gonna be viewed as that stereotype, Indians are dumb, stupid, lazy, drunk, welfare. I always say that's so passe now. We're getting educated, we're getting stronger, we're getting proud of who we are, and we will take our rightful place. That's what I see. So let's keep our circle strong in a good way. I hold you all up for what you're doing on this inquiry. We're gonna keep fighting strong. Hopefully that we see this, so that families get the justice they need and deserve. The families need to have this healing, and we need to close that gap and end this cycle that's there. So with that, my friends, my relatives, again, I'm very happy to be here. I thank the chief for calling me. She called me a couple of weeks, a week ago. Hey, you said this is important. You better come here. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to be there. So thank you so much. <laughs>